Hello everyone, welcome back to Fulgurin Gaming, so let's play of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Oh, Navi, come on, I'm introducing the episode, but I want to apologize for the last episode being, what, like 15 minutes or something like that? Oh, I might as well go ahead and, I can't do anything unless I go backwards and get a key. So, that's the reason I put this here, might as well put it right back here just in case. But anyway, I want to apologize for the last episode being short and not covering the whole dungeon. But I couldn't really help it because, like I said, it was getting really late, so I decided to just cut it right there. Let's go ahead and flip this. Watch, this is one of my coolest parts, or one of the coolest parts of the game. It makes the entire thing straight, and it kind of reminds me, around here we have a, a Ripley's Believe It or Not museum. And the fact that it's tilted or curved or whatever you want to call it like that, it kind of reminds me of a room in that museum where the walls are turning or whatever and it makes it really hard to stand up for like little kids and stuff like that and when I went through it as a kid I like you know fell down and stuff like I couldn't walk through it because I guess the walls were messing with my mind but anyway here we have a boss key and you might be wondering why you know what need is there for a boss key why can't we just go in the room with the boss and that is because in the adult dungeons you actually need a boss key to open the door to the boss so you can tell that they really stepped it up from the kid dungeons the thing is, with the kid dungeons, it was more like, you know, those dungeons were just kind of places you could go to, like the Deku Tree, and what was the other two? Oh, the Jelly, not the Jellyfish, Jabu Jabu's Belly, and here's a Gold Skeletal, by the way, and the other one was the Death Mountain Crater, so those, or not Death, what am I talking about? It was the Dodongo Cavern, and those places were kind of like natural things. This place, though, was kind of built to be a temple, so I guess I can kind of understand from a, you know, building the place standpoint why there would be doors with, you know, requirements that were not normal. And another thing, though, by the way, this door, don't worry about going in there, you don't need to. Don't really even know why it's there, I don't think you could even call it a shortcut. But then that also brings up the question, did the bosses of these dungeons kind of pick which room they wanted to be in? I don't know. Now here we have what are called, let's go ahead and investigate, a floor master. You saw me attack it and it broke apart pretty much into three. When you do that, you also have to kill the, the ones that break apart from it. But if one of them attaches to you, like they can latch onto you or whatever, it will basically regrow into a full grown floor master. And the reason you don't want to do that is because it can just indefinitely do that and the fight could end up taking forever. So now I think we might as well go ahead and use our Pharaoh's Wind Warp again. I'm not sure if I should put it back there or not. I feel like I'm going... No, I don't need to. Never mind. But I like how... Yeah, we can use our Pharaoh's Wind to get back here. And I, for, I, don't, I think I mentioned eating my words in the last episode. But I never, you know, explained why. But it's pretty obvious. I remember, like, hating on Pharaoh's Wind for not being useful. And then using... Oh! That was really close. I thought I saw a touch Link's head. That was a wall master, I believe. And if they touch you, like I said, they take you to the beginning of the dungeon. But yeah, as far as the Pharaoh's Wind spell, it is a little bit more useful than I gave it credit for, but I mean, I could have just walked back. I mean, it's not like Din's Fire, like I've explained, is actually required for some parts of the game, pretty much. But Pharaoh's Wind is not. Like, that's just the difference to me. I guess, you know, there's another magic spell you gotta get, and that one's not really required either, but it does make the game easier. I don't want to exactly explain what it does yet, just in case you want to, you know, find out when I tell you or whatever, but Fair Wars win, all in all, all it does is save time, which is not really a big deal when you're playing a game like this and you want it to last as long as possible, I guess. We had to go back and get that key in order to get through this door, and this puzzle right here is actually pretty cool, and I don't really know of any more puzzles like this, I guess. What you have to do is basically shoot an arrow through the fire into the ice, which is pretty cool, like I said. If we had the fire arrows, it wouldn't be a big deal, but we're not going to get those until after the water temple. And I'm pretty sure there's probably a glitch where you can get into the water temple before the forest temple. There seems to be a glitch for everything in this game. It kind of makes me wonder if you get the fire arrows before the forest temple. Like I said, this is all theoretical. I'm not sure if that's exactly possible with glitches or not. I wonder if the fire arrows would actually melt that ice or not. So that's a question for you guys if you know. Here, behind this door, let me just go ahead and show you. 
This is the top of that place we were at in the last episode. If we play the Scarecrow song right here, I'm pretty sure he'll appear. Might as well go ahead and show you what that looks like. But other than being maybe a shortcut, I'm not really sure why that would be useful either. Yeah, there he is. I wonder if he'll talk to us. Apparently not. But yeah, you can hook onto him with the hook shot. Like I said, not sure if that's supposed to be used for a shortcut or what. Because even if you fall down, I mean, you can go back the other way. Navi? We're gonna have to talk about this after the recording's over, okay? Now here we have sort of a- it's not really a puzzle, it's just more of like an obstacle, I guess you could call it. And there's a one, uh, an obstacle like this, I think, in Majora's Mask in one of the dungeons, too. I don't really- like, the thing is, with Majora's Mask, I don't really remember most things about, like, the fine details, I guess. I don't know why, I, I guess I need to play the game again. But I think there's one, a puzzle like that. Anyway, here's another puzzle, I'm gonna go ahead and speed this one up, because it's actually literally a puzzle, and you'll see what I mean in a second. There we go, not too hard. I like how I made like one or two mistakes and I just barely had enough time to get that puzzle put together. So I think they really expected you to get that thing put together with no, you know, hardly any mistakes. Let's go ahead and investigate her. Amy, one of the Post sisters. About to call her Amy, I, don't, I guess I can't read today. But like I was trying to explain in the last episode, what you want to try and do is get them in a corner like this. Because they have to like hit your shield like that twice before they become, you know, visible so you can hit them. So you might as well make it, you know, as quick as possible for them to hit you like that. And if you back them into a corner, obviously they're going to have less distance to travel to hit you. Another thing, the next area, you pretty much need arrows. I, did she not just drop some arrows? Where did those go? But I'm not sure what happens if you try to do the next area without arrows. I don't think you can even do it because, you, like I said, you need arrows. I think, oh, I was going to say, I think the next door must be, takes you back to the beginning of the dungeon. Indeed it does. And you can see that three of them are lit and there is now a Poe down there on the thing, so let's go ahead and take care of her. The trick to beating this Poe in particular is watch, see if you can see what the difference is. By the way, this is Meg, one of the Poe sisters. There are four, you know, iterations, or what, I don't know what you would even call her, four, you know, copies of her. Three copies and one of them is real. The one that's real, for whatever reason, will spin around so that you can tell which one's real. I like how I like how in video games, this isn't really a complaint or a nitpick or anything. It's just a funny thing, really, that I you know thought of. The boss in a mini or in a game or whatever the puzzle usually has some way for you to tell how to beat it. And I think it's funny how the enemies in games will tell you pretty much how to beat them. So I think it takes five arrows. If you try and go ahead and hit her with her sword, it doesn't work. So that's why I said I'm not sure what happens if you try to do the, you know, the spite without arrows. And I think we're on top of the elevator. Yep. So we're getting an elevator ride just in the wrong direction. And I, she dropped arrows, I think. Oh my. I like how she drops arrows and then it shows like a small cutscene and just doesn't give you enough time to pick up the drop that she did. Here we have a room. I, man, this room or dungeon's really a lot harder than I remember. I mean, the fire dungeon, I don't remember being this long. I probably will be end up being, you know, twice as long now that I say that. Here's that gold skull tele, by the way. And here we have the boss door, and you can see it has a boss lock on it. I want to go ahead and see if I got all of the gold skeletolas, and I did, because as you see right there to the left of the forest temple, there's actually a little, you know, gold skeletola icon. And as you can see, that matches the gold skeletola icon right here, which pretty much means that we got all the gold skeletolas in the area. Guys? Here we are going to have one of my favorite boss battles in any video game, and I'm not sure why, it just is. Aw oh, man, there's nobody here, let's go ahead and leave! Uh oh.
Ganon already? This is only the first temple in the game. How could the Ganon be the boss of this temple? Oh, it's not Ganon, but what is it? An evil spirit from beyond, beyond Phantom Ganon. I kind of mixed together the words beyond and Phantom. Phantom Ganon, obviously it's, you know, the first boss as the adult. It's not nearly as hard as the original Ganon, but it's funny that he uses a lot of the same moves. Now, you can you have to shoot him as he comes out of the paintings. I wonder which one. Of course. There, I got him. I think you have to hit him three or a couple times. Basically, after you hit him however many times, he will get off that horse. He comes in on one of the two. It's going to be the one on the left. There we go. Usually you can tell which one it's going to be by whichever one is lighter. It's kind of hard to explain. I used to think it had to go with whichever one was on the middle of the road. As you can see, one is usually off to the in the middle and one's on the right. It's going to be this one right here. Yeah, the one that's actually the one that you need to be hitting will be a little bit lighter in color or I guess, you know, luminescence than the other one. Now here he will throw these things at you. And to me, I've always had a problem hitting these things. I've heard that you can actually swing a bottle and hit these things back in. Oh my! See, obviously if he's too close to you, it's going to be a little difficult. Oh, it actually works! I didn't think swinging that bottle was actually going to work. But it's, whenever you hit it back at him, I don't like the fact that it doesn't automatically go directly bad at him, back at him. There we go, oh, apparently it did. It will stun him, basically. Oh! Got it. All right. As long as I don't, it doesn't hit me. I don't really care. But if when you hit it back, it will go back at him and stun him or whatever. And sometimes it will actually, he'll hit it back at you, and you'll have like a tennis match going on between you and Ganon in this little, you know, sparkly thing. Oh, I got him. Yes. I thought he just went behind the railings or whatever. I was about to be kind of mad. Luckily, if you do that jump slash and then do the power stab attack, he's really nothing to be worried about. That, guys, was our first boss battle, really, in the game. I guess you could classify the ones as a kid as bosses, but they were only leading up to the adult portion of the game. And to me, the adult dungeons and adult bosses are a whole lot better than the ones that you fight as a kid. And you'll see what I mean, especially in the Fire Temple. Like, that boss was, like, an amazing part of my, you know, my childhood with this game. And it's just better than the bug in the first dungeon. What was it in the second one? I can't even remember. See, they're not even memorable, but I haven't played the adult portion of the game in probably 10 years, and I still, like, remember my experience with it. But now, here we are back in the Chamber of the Sages, which is, as you guys know, in the Temple of Light. And Saria, what are you doing here? Thank you. Because of you, I could awaken as a sage. I am Saria, the sage of the Forest Temple. I always believed that you would come, because I know you. No. You don't have to explain it to me. Because it is destiny that you and I can't live in the same world. I will stay here as the Forest Sage and help you. Now, please, take this medallion. She had the most calm, passive face I have, think I've ever seen on a video game character during that cutscene. But here she is giving us the Forest Medallion. And if you guys have been keeping track at home, this will be our second medallion, with the first being the light medallion that we get automatically, you know, when we become an adult. Unfortunately, we don't get any sort of grass powers or anything like that, which I said before would be kind of cool. But yeah, see, it, she adds her power to ours. Not really, like, she sort of does in the fact that we have to have these to beat the game. Aw. But anyway, it doesn't actually help us necessarily beat the game, if you guys know what I mean.
Hi there, I'm the Deku Tree Sprout. Because you and Saria broke the curse on the Forest Temple, I can grow and flourish. Thanks a lot. Hey, have you seen your old friends? None of them recognized you with your grown-up body, did they? That's because the Kokiri never grow up. Even after seven years, they're still kids. You must be wondering why only you have grown up. Well, as you might have already guessed, you are not a Kokiri. You are actually a Hylian. I am happy to finally reveal the secret to you. Some time ago, before the King of Hyrule unified this country, there was a fierce war in our world. One day, to escape from the fires of the war, a Hylian mother and her baby boy entered this forbidden forest. The mother was gravely injured. Her only choice was to entrust the child to the Deku Tree, the guardian spirit of the forest. The Deku Tree could sense that this was a child of destiny, whose fate would affect the entire world, so he took him into the forest. After the mother passed away, the baby was raised as a Kukiri, and now, finally, the day of destiny has come. I like how they had to have a flaming background for that, you know, backstory. You are a Hylian, and we're always bound to leave this forest. And now, you have learned your own destiny, so you know what you must do. That's right, you must save the land of Hyrule. Now, Kyle, break the curses on all of the temples and return peace to Hyrule. That sounds like a tall order, but I think I'm the man for the job, so in the next episode, we have a lot of mopping up to do before we actually go take on the Fire Temple. And if it seems like the last two episodes were a little different, that is because, like I said in the last episode, a lot has been going on, like I've been having to be a whole lot of places and these have had to been done at weird times with weird situations. And I just want to apologize, but the next episode will be back to normal how they usually are. So I want to thank you for watching this episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and I want to see you guys back for the next episode.